bright duty every student matters let's begin with the first part that is the nervous system in humans question number 1 what are receptors and what is their function so receptors are specialized uh, endings of the cells which receive the information from the surrounding okay so there are special cells which carry out the messages which we called as nerve cells or neurons so the endings of the nerve cells they are called receptors they are called receptors as the name suggests they receive the information from our environment so if you touch a hot plate what will happen the receptors will receive the message and send the message to the brain so this is their function to receive the impulse and send it to the brain or the spinal cord to take action in the second question describe the structure and function of a neuron with the help of a diagram so this neuron is basically the basic unit of our nervous system don't get confused between neuron and nephron nephron as i told you in the previous chapter it is the basic unit of our kidneys and neuron is the basic unit of nervous system so each nerve cell is called a neuron look at the structure here the uh, it has all the organelles which are present in a typical cell so nerve cell we can divide it into three parts the cell body this exon and the dendrites the cell body has tiny projections which are called dendrites okay so these are the dendrites this is the nucleus and the cytoplasm now there is a one long thin projection this is called exon now the exon has a protective covering you can see this covering it is a protective covering which is called myelin sheath this exon then ends into again into branches these are called the nerve endings or, or the exonal endings so this is a typical structure of a nerve cell and you can label it next question what is a synapse okay and what happens at synapse what is their function so the nerve cells they arise from the brain and spinal cord and spread throughout the body and similarly from the uh, receptors they would send the message back to the brain so they are long thread like structure but sometimes uh, what happens the nerve cells pass one the messages pass from one nerve cell to the another but these nerve cells are not in physical contact with each other okay so let us assume this is a nerve cell with the exonal ending okay so these are dendrites so what happens the next adjacent neuron is arranged like this okay so the dendrites receive the message pass it to the exon and really uh, these are the exonal endings this gap between the two uh, adjacent neurons is called a synapse they are not in touch with each other there is no physical contact so this gap between two adjacent neurons is called a synapse so the question arises what happens at synapse how nerve impulse is transferred to the next neuronal cell the when a nerve impulse is generated in the dendrites and uh, uh, they receive certain stimulus okay a nerve impulse is generated it is passed on through the exon when it reaches the exonal end these exons they release certain chemicals at the synapse these uh, chemicals are called neurotransmitters these neurotransmitters generate similar kind of impulse in the next uh, uh, next cell dendrites of the next adjacent cell so similar impulse is generated here it is again passed out through exon to the next cell this is how nerve impulse travels in our body next question what is a reflex action reflex action is a sudden uh, involuntary action re uh, response to some external harmful stimuli for example if you touch a hot plate you suddenly move your hand away from it this is a reflex action it does not involve any thinking uh, process so it is a sudden action involuntary in response to some uh, external harmful stimuli okay so when you step on a uh, step on some sharp object you suddenly release your uh, leg uh, from there okay when there is some sharp object coming towards your face you uh, move it suddenly so this rapid action to protect yourself is a reflex action next question explain the reflex arc 
So, this reflex action starts from the sensory neuron and uh, brings comes back to the motor neuron to take some action. This whole pro path of impulse is called nerve uh, sorry reflex arc. So, how does it start? It starts from the stimulus any external stimulus for example, let us take example of touching a hot plate. So, the stimulus is the heat in this case, you touched it. So, there were sensory neurons, the sensory neurons just beneath our skin they received that impulse. So, the receptors this initiated an action, impulse was generated and impulse passed on through the exon ok. Then it went to the spinal cord in which relay neuron is present ok. The relay neuron passes on the message from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron. This relay neuron is present in the spinal cord. Then this message is passed to the motor neuron. Motor neuron passes the impulse to the effector organ. This effector organ could be a muscle or a gland alright. So, this whole arc is called the reflex arc. So, I will explain it again with an example. We touched something hot ok, an impulse was generated received by the sensory neurons. It passes on to the relay neuron in the spinal cord. This relay neuron passed on the impulse to the motor neuron. Motor neuron reaches the muscles of the uh, let us say arms and it contracts and we move our hand backward. So, this arc this path uh, followed by the nerve impulse is called a reflex arc. Next question, how do we detect smell of an agarbatti? So, uh, we I told you we have specialized uh, endings of the cells which are called receptors, they receive the stimulus from the our surroundings or the environment. So, in this case the smell in our nose we have olfactory receptors, they receive the whenever there is some any kind of smell these olfactory receptors they initiate a impulse which reaches our brain and we sense the smell. It is not the smell which actually travels through the to the brain, it is the nerve impulse which travels in our body and our brain senses certain things like hot plate or a smell or any such thing ok. Next what is the role of brain in reflex action? I just told you that reflex actions are actually completed by the spinal cord, the relay neurons were present in the spinal cord. Uh, this is so because if the messages goes to the brain and if thinking process is involved, it will take a little bit longer time and we may, might get actually harmed by such actions. For example, if you touch a hot plate and you keep on thinking oh it is harmful, I should remove my hand then this will waste a little bit of time and our body uh, actually gets affected. So, most of the uh, most of the reflex actions are completed by the spinal cord in which thinking process is not involved, it is a rapid involuntary action. So, what is the role of the brain? Two things, first of all whenever uh, a uh, reflex action takes place, this message later on goes to the brain for memory. For example, a small child ok, he touched something hot and he removed his hand immediately by reflex action. So, next time when he sees that hot thing, he will not touch it. The reason being that uh, action was uh, went to the brain for memory and it was stored ok, for, uh, for just to protect our body in future. So, first thing is this all the actions they go to the brain for memory purpose. Secondly, some of the reflex actions are actually controlled by a part of the brain ok. So, uh, what happens the because in the neck region and the head region the brain is nearer than the spinal cord. So, if you are uh, if you are just moving your head or neck and if the iris is closing or expanding these actions these reflex actions of the head and neck region are controlled by the brain. So, there are two functions. Next, what is the need for control and coordination? This should be the first question. We are studying the chapter control and coordination. Why there is a need for control and coordination in our body or in any multicellular organism? Basically, in the multicellular organisms, there are so many functions. 
In the previous chapter, we read about so many different systems like nutrition, respiration, transportation, excretion. So, uh, if there are system, different systems, they need to coordinate with each other. Okay, for firstly for proper functioning and secondly for better efficient work and thirdly to protect our body from the harmful external stimuli. There has to be coordination. Okay, for example, if you have eaten a heavy meal, there has the, the uh, digestive system has to work okay, hard to digest that. Then there need to be better blood supply to the digestive system to absorb those nutrients the blood has to circulate it to all parts of the body and whenever there is a requirement those nutrients are supplied to the muscles uh, to release energy. So, this control and coordination is important for growth, for development, for efficient functioning because there are different systems and they have to coordinate with each other. Next question, differentiate between reflex action and walking. Okay? So, if, if you can, I just told you reflex action, it is rapid involuntary action, while on the other hand walking is a voluntary action, it is at your will, will, when you want to walk, you just get up and start walking. So, this is a rapid involuntary action, while walking is a, a, a walking is voluntary. Secondly, reflex action is actually controlled by spinal cord, most of the reflex actions are controlled by spinal cord. On the other hand, walking, while you are walking, you are, you are maintaining your posture and balance that is controlled by cerebellum in the brain. So, these are two main differences. Next question, differentiate between reflex action and some involuntary action. So, involuntary action like beating of heart or uh, expanding of lungs, all such visceral organs in our body, they are, uh, there is some action going on, all such actions which are not in our control are called involuntary action. So, the difference between reflex action and involuntary. Reflex action are controlled by spinal cord, I just told you that, while on the other hand, involuntary actions are controlled by the brain. Okay? The medulla of the brain controls many involuntary action, while pawns in the brain, it controls respiration. So, they are controlled by the brain. Uh, so, uh, first difference is this. Second is it involves autonomic nervous system. Our nervous system has two parts, autonomic and voluntary. So, this is control involves uh, autonomic nervous system while reflex action, although it is involuntary, but it is actually, uh, it is managed by the our voluntary nervous system. Next question, uh, name the different parts of the brain and their function. Okay? So, if you have seen my previous video, I have drawn the diagram of the brain, brain has different parts. So, we can divide it into three parts, first is the forebrain, forebrain is the main part of the forebrain is cerebrum. This cerebrum is involved in thinking, memory, intelligence, reasoning okay? and all this, uh, it also has certain uh, centers, the lobes which are present like it has olfactory lobe which senses the smell. So, this is the, these are the main parts of forebrain. Second is the midbrain. Midbrain is involved in the reflex actions of the head and the neck region. For example, the contraction and relaxation of the iris muscles in the eye, they are controlled by the midbrain. And third is the hindbrain. Hindbrain again has three parts, okay? pons, cerebellum and the medulla. Pons controls respiration, then uh, cerebellum, it maintains the posture, okay? whenever you are walking or dancing or running or riding a bicycle, you are able to maintain a good posture, you do not slip, uh, you do not become clumsy, it is because of cerebellum, it maintains your posture. And the third part is the medulla, which controls other involuntary actions like peristaltic movement, movement of the diaphragm while breathing, all these involuntary actions are controlled by medulla. So, the structure, different parts of the brain and function of each, uh, each part of the brain, it is very important. 